uh, heater hose on this uh, Ranger. We're gonna go look at the goats while we let this vehicle cycle for a little while. So uh, yeah, and the leak stopped and yeah. Let's check out the, this place, this beautiful place. I need me a place like this. There's some animals around there. She's gonna get the goats. Meh! Meh! <laughs> I used to have a goat. I used to have three goats. Uh, Billy was my favorite, so. Meh! Meh. Do they like to play? My goat used to raise up on his hind legs and fight me all the time. Hey, guys. Lock the gate. Meh! Matt. Here we go. Here we go. You're standing on my Tell everybody foot. again what these goats are. What's the name of them? They're uh, half Nigerian and half pygmy. Half Nigerian <laughs> and half pygmy. They help what are those things called that hang from his neck? Those are called waddles. Yeah. And they think that perhaps that was something that goats needed many, many years ago mm -hmm. that they don't have a use for anymore. They don't necessarily have to be on their neck. They can be anywhere. And about 50% of the goats have them. If you look, I got two that do and two that don't. Yes, I see that. Mm -hmm. This is buck. It's some kind of uh, some ancient gene. Yeah, some ancient uh, probably a that's buck. Otis has got an ear that hangs down because he has a dog down there killing him. He likes to fight, huh? No, this, this brown is normal. One, which this is, is the one that likes to play and play fight? Oh, they are, all of them do. <laughs> Mine was, uh, I see that brown one's real yeah, active. Their, uh, their oh, little mountain range toys. I love it. I love it. <laughs> is that cool or what? How cool is it to be a mobile mechanic and you get to meet all these cool people with uh, experiences? There you go. Georgie. It's a little mountain. That's a little mountain. They can do that any. Was, that was hard to build. These goats can do anything. Except yeah. Them. Yeah. There's <laughs> Georgie. Georgie's the biggest one. And it took him, it took longer to this is Daisy, that's the little doe. And Otis with his ear that They're beautiful. Is messed up and buck. What's He's wrong with this what's wrong with his ear? See it hanging down? Yeah. He had what a, I had a big pit bull when I was bored and it was tethered over there in the dog yard because he jumped fences. And he broke loose and he jumped out of that fence into oh, this fence geez. and he grabbed him down the ear canal and under here. Oh man. And he went yelling and I knew something was wrong. He spent about two You're weeks okay. at the vet. He almost died. About a thousand dollars in three months yeah. to get him well. Yeah. You're but okay. You're okay. I was oh he's great. He's a soldier. They picked on him for a while and once he got <laughs> his strength back. Why do you want this, huh? Why do you want this? Go Cheerio. <laughs> Daisy did he push you down. Poor little Daisy, they pick on you. I used to do this to my goat. Get down really low, and he'd get really low, and then we just do that together. Uh-huh. <laughs> they butt yeah. heads and stuff. Look how yeah. they've torn up there. They're beautiful, man. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Thank you for letting me do that. Ain't no problem. See my little barn I built? I know, this is so cute. And it's cool. It's cooler in here than it is yeah. outside. They spend a lot of time in here. I just put that up there with mineral salt in it and one of them knocked it off. Oh well. Alright, it's running good guys. Let's just check on this. We'll get on. We got, we got a lot to do today, so it's not leaking. And that'll be it guys. Let's get to the next one. Hey, it looks like a little farm. Hello. Hello? Hey, yeah, you're I'm there. I just had a question for you since I'm making this YouTube video. If you if you did if you don't mind, what kind of dogs are you selling? Uh, miniature Aussie doodles. Miniature Aussie doodles. Okay. 
Yes. That way I can kind of like yes. maybe put that in my YouTube video and uh, who knows, someone might call you and say, hey man, I sell you on A's Mobile Auto Repair YouTube video. <laughs> hey, well thank you. That sounds great. All right, I'm going to do it. What's All your right. what's, what's your phone number? Um, you got it. Your I know, but on. I'm on video right now. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Okay. And you guys seen the place. It's an awesome place. She's got lots of dogs. Uh, I think she said she just had a litter. So uh, look her up. And on that note, let's get to the next one. We're going to South Jackson to that old the customer to that previous customer of mine. So let's go back and see what he's got going on. It's gonna be a no crank, no start. That means the motor's not turning over and it's not starting. Crank and start are two different things, guys. That is probably one of the most difficult things to, when you first talk to a customer and you're trying to figure out, is it cranking, is the motor turning over or is the motor turning over and it's not starting? That's probably one of the most difficult things to get people to understand. Whoa, it's not cranking up. That means that it's not starting to most people, but it's not. It's not cranking means the motor's not turning over. All right, it's not turning over. Turning over and not starting is another thing. All right, guys, enough of that. We beat that horse to death. <laughs> Wait, start it start over. I can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? I'll try it. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my wife and I we got a uh take care of them. And you had done some work on our van before. Uh over here at North Jackson the Jet Center. Okay. So we just saying that and I was calling the ski uh how much was you charge to put on like bill? Did you say? Did you say a belt? Yeah, a belt, serpentine belt. A serpentine belt? Uh, I got a hundred dollar minimum, so you'll probably be about a hundred bucks. I gotta look it up yet, but yeah, you're gonna be spending a hundred, no less than a hundred bucks for sure, plus the belt. Okay. Uh, with the label. Well, I, I think, can I, can I take your information on the van? Yeah, you sure can. Okay, and then you just give us your label and, you know, how much the bill will cost. That's perfect. And send me, way. send me the address, okay. too, uh, so I can see where you're at. Okay, all right, now, okay. Thanks, all right, man. Thank you. Yeah, and that's how I talk and say it to them. And you're not going to spend no less than a hundred bucks. You know, that's just to get in my truck and of course I'll put it towards the labor if I can if I'm not running into and I got to pull out power probes and pins and and do wiring testing pull out schematics you know all that's work guys it's not free it's all it's all work if I'm doing something different it's all work hell when I go home and study at night that's still work I may be working on your vehicle and, and not even touching your vehicle or can see your vehicle. That's work. Time out of your day so you can find the problem, do your research. All that is work. So, you know, most... Use the left two lanes to keep left onto I-55 South toward McComb. And most people don't have a problem with paying me, especially after you got good Google reviews or you got good word of mouth. You know, the Google reviews really set you up for success. And you gotta make sure you always do what you say and be on time, well, not, not on time, I take that back. Keep Just fun. always do what you say and uh, man, pick up the phone if they're trying to call you, or call them back. In 1.6 miles, take the exit onto South by 55 Frontage Road. It all makes a difference out here especially on your Google reviews. I, I have bad Google reviews too, but most of the time they're people that really don't, they want something for nothing or, you know, they're, they don't have no money and they're, you know, 
Don't get mad at me because you don't have enough money to take care of the job. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. We all been broke before. Well, you gotta change shit up if you're always broke, like I did. And make something happen for yourself. You can't wait on getting a job and depending on other companies and people to support you. You gotta get out there and get it yourself. You gotta get out there and get it yourself. If they can do it, you can do it, right? They built a huge ass company, you can do it too, or a small one. I, I like being small, it's just me, my assistant, and, Use the right and my other mechanic. The exit onto South I That's fine. Road. And I was good by myself. This is just like extra money. And you may think like, oh, he's paying the mechanic. No, I still got my work to do. My money's not changing. That's just extra. I get a little piece of his. I get a little piece of hers. And actually, my assistant is making me money. Take the exit. Then turn left so onto South I-55 she's earning her own pay, to be honest with you. Setting me up with appointments, sending Dwan on turn jobs. Turn left onto South I-55 You know, Frontage doing the stuff Portico. that I really don't have time to do. So she's making her own money, really. And making me money at the same time. And Dwan is doing the same thing, so that's just a plus. All right, man, we're almost here at the job. Let me find out where we're going, Mason Road. I hate coming to South Jackson. Oh, yeah, we're here. All right, let's get it. All right, let's get it. We're in South Jackson. A uh, referral from another customer, his family. So I'll work in South Jackson as long as it's a referral from someone that I know. Uh, other than that, I mean, you're literally not taking new clients in South Jackson. Anymore. So, anyways, uh, good family. So let's go ahead and do it. This is going to be a no crank, no start on a 2015 terrain GMC. Uh huh. This one is full, and uh, it hadn't been changing out, but it been running. And, uh, okay. I was gonna heat them and bring it up there and he'll check it. Okay. He'll check it if I bring it to him. Well, let's see what you got going on here. Now it won't crank, it won't do anything. No, it won't. Uh, put the key in, but it is not Oh, it's got one of these motors in it. It looks like that, that, uh, that freaking uh, HHR motor, that 2.4, 2.2 motor in it. All right, let's see what you got going on. All right, we're rolling. All right, check engine light is on. It's good. Security light is staying on, but it does go out, so it's not going to be a security issue, more than likely. It doesn't say anything at all, but if you notice the security light, it's going to go out. Computer verified the code, light goes out. Let's check under the hood. Let me turn the key off for a second. Alright, I just cycled the key again. I should have two 10 volts. I got 2.7 volts in that. And I have 11 volts in that. That's not good at all. I got two volts in that. This relay is not going to energize like that. Two volts. Battery voltage is 11.72. Give me a favor, sit in the vehicle for me for a second. Sit it again. Sit in the vehicle for a second. I'm on the driver's side, on this side. Driver's side, driver's side. Alright. Uh -uh. Try to start it for me. 
Try to start it. All right, what I think I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and jump that uh, wire going straight to the starter from the relay. Let me find out which one it is. Because I don't want to probe the wrong pin. Man, it's been like a hundred for, for weeks now. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what else have you done? It was starting up fine, no problem, all, all right, of a sudden one day. One day, just been one of Let's shut this up down, won't bring it back or do I say? And on this one, I had to input the VIN number because I can't read into the computer. So let's go ahead and do a health report. See what kind of modules or other modules are affected. And maybe we can get a clue. So yeah, that's what we're doing, man. Let's get a clue. It's damn hot out here, y'all. Come on, body control module or something like that. We got electronic brake module, we got the power steering module, ain't worried about any of those. But I still may find clues. There's body control modules, three in the body control module. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see what those are in a second. All right. Lost communication with engine control module. This is the body control module here. Lost communication with the engine control module right there. So let's check all the PCM fuses is what I'm gonna do next. Let's check all the PCM fuses. Okay, let's do it. Sorry. All right, so what I found was uh, that plug for the transmission was unplugged and uh, th that long bar that snaps it in there, that locks it, that pushes it in and locks it down was totally out so I got it back in there let's see if this thing starts sir right. let's see if it starts now because you know you got a wire down there on the neutral safety switch so if that's unplugged that starter is not going to engage because they don't know what gear it's in I do I do fire and hole cross your fingers pays more blood repair we're at Jackson this city Everybody. Got the transmission oh, plug plugged uh, in. Oh man, did, uh, did the stretch thing, how you unplug it? All right, I'll get it. I'll get it. Wait a minute, hands clear. Yeah, it starts up. Transmission control module plug. And that's it, guys. It's Hayes Mobile Auto Repair. We're in Jackson, Mississippi. Ridgeland, Mississippi. We're out. All right, man, I got all your codes erased. Check engine light is off. Check engine light is off. All right, all right. You're good to go. I'm gonna. I asked him down there when he was working on that transmission problem because he's having some kind of shifting issue. I said, did you mess with anything, any wires down there or anything? Because it was starting before he started that transmission job. He said, yeah, I was. Uh, he said uh, the guy. <coughs> he said the guy was playing with a harness connector down there. Uh, I thought he meant it was dangling or something. He just put it up with the strap. But no, he was talking about. I, he was talking about someone bungee cord that plug, that connector on the transmission and strapped it and strapped it on. I mean, that's like uh, putting a. Uh, that's like putting a. You got a Coke bottle right here with a screw cut tap, and you just drop the screw tap on it, and you put a bungee over it so it won't come off but it'll still leak. There's no connection. It's just like that, and that's what they did. So the connector was just laying on top. It wasn't pushed in. It wasn't screwed in and got connection. So, dude went in there. The connector was already jacked up. So I had to get a little screwdriver and start poking the, uh, the connector. There's a little slide bar on that. Fingers would be a train. Uh, and I had to just poke that slide thing and that thing, that little slide sucks that connector down and makes a connection. And that's what I did, man. And, uh, fired up. And that's why it's important, guys, when you're out there in the field doing your thing, ask questions. Ask as many questions as you can. You want to know everything he knows. And that's, sometimes that's how I say it. I want to know everything you know. 
who was in here, what did they do, you know, questions, so you can get to the problem faster. When we look at the schematic again, you know, that was going to be my next check, the neutral safety switch anyways, but now that I know that I have low voltage, if I, and, and a no computer, lost communication with the computer, I'll automatically have that memory that, man, I'm going to check the neutral safety switch, man, because I remember we had low voltage on that uh, control wire at the relay site. So it's going to be one of the things I'll always remember. The more experience you got out here, man, the quicker things are going to come and the quicker you can get paid and get out of there and get to the next one and the next one. So, yeah, you got to retain all that stuff. Yeah, you do. Start a relay real quick for better understanding. Start a relay. This wire right here comes from the battery. It goes up there and it gives power right till there until that energizes. This is the ground lead over here. 86 is a ground lead. It's grounded to the engine. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the computer sends 12 volts up this line, let me show you. And that's coming from the engine control module. You'll see it right there, engine control module. Starter relay coil control. So the computer will send 12 volts uh, down this line as soon as it sees it's in neutral. So if you go down here, it's all part of the starting circuit too. The, uh, da -da 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 -da, where are you at? Transmission internal mode switch. So, yeah, that should be like the neutral safety switch. That is going to be like the neutral safety switch. Neutral, uh, well, transmission, internal mode switch. Okay, whatever. So, uh, 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 uh. looks like it goes down here a little bit further, too. All right, there's that transmission control module, the TCM. That was all disconnected, so nothing's gonna work. It's not gonna know it's in neutral, so as soon as it gets a signal from the transmission and goes to the neutral, there it is, neutral signal, and then the PCM will give voltage to the relay. All right, it'll give voltage to the relay. Come on, computer give voltage up here it goes to the coil of wire it goes to the ground a magnetic field energizes a magnetic mag a magnetic field will be created and it'll close that door shut and then your voltage can run down here past the fuse past the fuse into the starter which is down here somewhere into the starter motor and the motor and the starter will engage and that's it <laughs> All right, guys. I'm glad we got that one going. Until next time. By the relay, let me show you quickly uh, this relay. Okay. This is our uh, this is our load side where the power comes in from the battery. One second. Hello, it says. Uh, uh, you know, it's an oil cooler. Then you said it's another part. An oil cooler, and uh, it, I think it's called a. It's called the outlet housing, I believe. Take a picture of it and take it to the parts store. I think it's an outlet housing. Okay. Outlet housing and an oil cooler. All right, buddy. He's in Byron, Mississippi, right now. He should be. Uh, he should be on the way. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Let's just look at the schematic for a second. This is the starter relay up here. Okay, starter relay. Let's follow it down a little bit and let's just go over with the relay on this uh, on this truck, on the terrain. 
Okay, let's start from the bottom. Let's start from this side of the circuit. It's come straight from the battery. Okay, that's where it gets its power from the battery. So you follow that up. Schematics are awesome, y'all. If you're out in the field doing mobile mechanic work or being a mechanic, man, you got to get some kind of program to help you out, man, instead of doing all that guessing. Uh, this saves you so much time. And it's cheap. You know, it's fairly cheap to, uh, in, in, in relation to how much money you're going to make just by having this program. So the voltage goes up. It goes right down down here. And this is I like to call it a little door that opens and closes and it is energized by a magnetic field and this is the coil wire this is the control side of the circuit and this is the load side of the circuit the load is where the power comes from all your main power the power that operates the starter the power that operates the window motor whatever you're powering up is the load side what controls the load side is the control side that's why they call it control <laughs> All right, it's got, it produces a magnetic field, coil of wires, creates a magnetic field, it creates a magnetic field to close the door, and then power can now run down this line right here. And I'll show you. And it runs down to the starter, which the starter is down here. All right, there's the starter motor right there. There's that wire. All right, so. Our problem was not on the load side. Our problem was on the control side. Something has to control that door to open and close. It's like a light switch, right? Some, similar to a light switch, I guess. Uh, magnetic field, more likely. A magnetic field is what I meant to say. But anyways, we want to find out where... Now, if you look down here, you'll see this wire on this side of the control side goes straight to a ground straight up uh, the rear of the engine so it's not a ground problem we're having we had a power problem so if we follow this down follow that wire down on the control side it goes right into the starter relay control uh, coil control okay so that's where the power that's the control side and if you notice right here that is the engine control module. Remember, we didn't have communication with the engine control module. We didn't have any communication with the engine control module until after uh, we plugged up the, uh, the transmission. So that would have been a dead end for me. If I would have followed this wire, I would have realized that this was not doing its thing. It wasn't grounding. It wasn't sending power. Uh, it wasn't excuse me so if I were to trace that wire down uh, pit 85 is where I had that two point that two volts coming out of that it, that's all I had was two volts coming out of that I believe that was 85 I believe that was 85. It's the only thing that makes sense. Shit, I don't know what wire it was, to be honest with you. So what happens over here is the engine computer once the engine computer once, uh, let me get this phone. All right, people, let's take a look at this relay. Let me increase the screen for you, and we'll we'll explain what we already saw. Okay, so right here is where we jump the starter at pin 30 right there at pin 30 so if we get voltage to this well I'm sorry this fuse right here this pin 87 uh, if we give 12 volts to that fuse 
uh, the starter would crank over. Okay, so we're not on the, we're not over this 